Hey guys, and welcome to another IndieTips.com tutorial here on Ugly McGregor. Today we are going to look at LED lighting. We will be looking at the differences between LED and tungsten lighting, some comparisons between a few lights, and a look at the new Aperture Lightstorm LED light panel. You might be familiar with seeing film lights look a lot like this. Now this is a typical Fresnel light, the S is silent. They are called Fresnel because they use a Fresnel lens, which is recognized by the stepped molding on one side and texturing on the other side of the lens. This type of light produces a very even focused hard light, which becomes soft at the edges. And because the edge of the light is soft, it will blend easily with the edges of other Fresnels to give a smooth coverage. The problem is these lights cost a pretty penny for basic power coverage. An ARRI 300 watt can cost around about $400 at a good price, and that's just for one light that has a very narrow and soft coverage. Now this is where LEDs can come into play. We're gonna be looking at what you can get at a basic setup on a minimum budget. First off though, many might be unfamiliar with LEDs and what difference they provide in comparison with the classic tungsten lighting setup. So let us first look at some of the differences other than the way that the light is emitted. As mentioned, LEDs cost a significant amount less. LEDs require less power. The Lightstorm 1, for example, requires less than half the amount of power a 300 watt requires, yet it is as bright as three 300 watt lights. Let's have a look at the difference in illuminating a room between the two power inputs. The LS1 was so bright at intensity 100, I actually had to decrease the brightness just to keep exposure correct. There's definitely an unparalleled difference on which light is brighter. LEDs are often more portable. Many have the accessibility of being battery operated, either with the standard AA batteries or with batteries that you may be familiar with because you've heard of such batteries being used for cameras, such as a V-mount battery. And a predominant feature is that they only heat up to a fraction of the temperature a 300 watt tungsten light would heat up to. To make adjustments on the band doors of a 300 watt after it's been on for a while, you would need gloves or at the very least wait a small amount of time before making any adjustments. Yet, a small LED light which has been on for 25 minutes straight may bear the same heat you would find from your phone after 10 minutes of continuous use, which is next to nothing. However, the downside of LEDs is that sometimes the color cast can be distasteful from cheaper models. It often gives this bright white light, and although it can be tailored with like any light, an initial blast of LED lighting may not look as aesthetically pleasing as a blast from a tungsten light. As mentioned, the Fresnel lens produces a light that has soft edges. You can actually get a Fresnel light with LEDs inside instead of a tungsten bulb, which provides the best of both worlds. However, these lights are gonna cost you a pretty penny. Likewise, multiple non-diffused LEDs from different brands may cast incoherent colors and unwanted shadows. Cheaper LEDs may also cause a flicker when their batteries are starting to die, which is something you're not necessarily gonna find from a tungsten light which is running from the main power. And in comparison with a Fresnel light's build, LEDs can often seem that their build is cheaper. The band doors are usually plastic, and from my experience, when a Fresnel light has been knocked over, the sturdy metal doors have saved the lens from being smashed more than once. We have the comparisons. What can we get for budget levels? For a complete whimsical budget, you can pick up something like this on eBay. This was £15, which is around $30 or so. Now let's get the obvious out of the way. This light isn't gonna be enough to illuminate an entire scene, but an LED like this is great for adding little bits of extra light in the background. Perhaps you need to illuminate an object in the back of the frame and you can't place a light near the object, or you may want to show some illumination on the actor's face as if he's looking at a mobile phone, but the phone's light doesn't give as much illumination as needed. Personally, when filming macro shots, I like to attach this light to the hot shoe attachment of the camera and ever so slightly increase the brightness for some extra exposure in that macro world. It's a really nice, small, compact tool to have in your arsenal of lighting gear. From various online outlets, you can also look at picking up a set of 160 LED lights that will allow you to provide a lot more coverage to a lot of areas in your composition. These lights are a little bit brighter than the previous LED and they offer a bit more durability and control. Now these LEDs come with a set of color filters and they also come with a hot shoe attachment and with a secondary attachment you can then place this onto a light stand. Quite often these 160s will act as my fill light when I need a different color cast coming in. 
If you look at this frame here, this actor is lit by the 300 watt coming in from behind the camera and the lamps to the side of him are also providing some illumination. Now this casts the actor in a warm glow, although with the grading the entire scene looks a bit cold. Then behind him and to the right I've placed one of these LEDs. This helps break the actor away from the dark background and add some colour variance to the composition. These lights are fast, they're portable and they're great for adding fill or a rim light into a scene. Again though, no, this isn't going to be enough to provide key lighting for your composition. This is where we can look at a light like the Aperture Lightstorm. It was only released two weeks ago, so this will borderline as a review. The Lightstorm gives the same light output as a 1K light. Although if we have a look at some of the other 1K LEDs on the market, you may notice that they usually have this one by one size format and the LEDs are placed in lines quite far apart from each other. Yet the Lightstorm is incredibly compact and still displays the same amount of light. And in the world of technology, when tools or equipment get smaller while displaying the same range of efficiency or better, it's usually a good thing. Aperture have been able to combat this by placing the LEDs into a honeycomb structure. Usually having this many LEDs close to each other does cause some concern for heat, but the back of the light has a housing which acts as a heat sink which absorbs all of the heat. With this, the controls are moved off the device and onto a control panel. When I first received the light, I was initially put off by this. I had all these different questions running through my head. I was thinking, is this going to dangle on the stand all the time? If I don't have anything to tie it up with, is someone going to have to hold it? Then, ever since I've used the light, it's all made perfect sense. When I have a light, which is pretty high up and I need to adjust the placement of the beam angle, it either involves me lowering the light or getting a stool to stand on. And having the controls below allows for easy access and it speeds up efficiency on set. A simple turn of the dial and I've increased or decreased the brightness. This light alone could end the stool making business. Now I can't talk about the greatness of the control panel without talking about the luxury of the remote. The light comes with a remote with a 100 meter range. If you're awkwardly on top of your shed and you're trying to get your dad to do a barrel roll out of the door and you need to increase the brightness, the remote will allow you to stay on that shed a lot longer. Or if you do work with a team, no longer are the days where you will awkwardly try to explain how to decrease the brightness to someone who's never really touched a light. The LS1 is priced at $695, which is around about £370. If you're entering into the world of DSLR filmmaking and looking for a lighting solution, you know what? This light might not be for you as it may stretch out of your budget. I think that the price may deter a lot of DIY and entry level filmmakers, but as always, my favorite word on this channel is context. And I think you need to look at the context you can play with this light in terms of power and light display. If the light is given off the same illuminance as a 1K light, then let's have a look at how much a typical 1K light is going to cost. Well, at the very least, how much three 300 watts would cost? You're looking at well over $1,250 and more for a standard durable brand. In fact, if you had that budget anyway, you could buy two light stones and hit 2K illuminance. The light coverage for the price is worth it. The design of the light is slim and sleek. I may even say stylish. It's robust and has some weight to it. A good handful of LEDs in the market are able to change color temperature. This model isn't able to do that, but Aperture do offer an alternative version where you can change the temperature to 3200K. But in all of my experience, I've never used an LED with the intention of changing the color temperature if that option has been available. I prefer the use of gels, as sometimes I find that certain color temperatures from LEDs, other than the standard temperature they usually come with, can look a little bit too artificial. This light storm finds itself based at a daylight color temperature of 5500K. The control box also allows for a V-mount or an Anton Bauer battery to be attached. The battery will provide around two hours of constant illumination. Two batteries would be more than enough to complete a standard scene outside. So to test the light's strength in daylight, I went outside around about 7 p.m. when the sun was more or less just starting to set. The actress is going to increasingly move away from the light as I increase the brightness in an attempt to keep the illumination on her face. I've placed the light intensity at 50 to start. As you can see from the results, this light is great. I'm able to provide full illumination to the actress when she's still 16 feet away from the camera and the light. 
Initially, upon first receiving the light, I did find that my go-to stands, which are pretty cheap, wouldn't hold the light steady. The light is around about 3.5 kilograms when it's all kitted up, and the thing is, with a Fresnel light, the central mass of the light is circulated right above where you would connect the light to the stand. However, with the light storm, the mass is spread out equally past the point where you would connect the light and the stand. Therefore, there's a lot of weight spill. Obviously, a more durable stand would stop the swaying. And I really wanted to find something to harshly criticize the light storm about. That being said, other than the fact that the light isn't necessarily DIY filmmaker budget friendly in terms of the cost, it's a really solid light to add to your gear. I will definitely be adding more aperture equipment to my arsenal in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this video on LED lighting and the review of the aperture light storm. Until next time.